Okay, sugar. This Latanya was Saggy Soul, and I'm a whole lot of woman. Aries, this is your reading. Happy birthday. But before I get started, let me say thank you. To all of my old subscribers, I really appreciate you. Welcome to my new subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing. So family, thank you for the shares, the likes, the dislikes, the comments. Uh, and so family, of course, thank you so much for leaving your comments and sharing your personal stories because of course it helps to help others, others who are going through the same situations, similar situations, and those who are coming up behind the energy. All right, Aries, so it is your birthday season. I believe you have a couple of days left this month. I'm recording this on the 17th. Uh, and so after the 19th, that will be your last day of the season. But of course, this is a restart of your life, of course, right? Uh, I was looking at a sermon by Stephen Furtick and his sermon was about, you must be important. And a lot of you, you're coming to this channel or you're going through tarot because some of you are going through some, some type of pain, whether it's heartache, whether it's betrayal, whether it's abandonment. Uh, some of you are going through just feeling different, different in your own skin, different as if you, know, you belong somewhere else or you don't belong here, or even just addictions, right? Whether it's drug addictions, alcohol addictions, sex addictions. But uh, I'm here to tell you that you must be important. There must be something, uh, a plan that's meant for your life because the pain is to teach you about self-love, self-respect. Those addictions that you're going through, look around at the people who are maybe enabling you, who are buying those drugs for you, who are keeping you in low vibration because maybe they're taking your time, Maybe they're even taking your money, right? And fellas, for some of you, those addictions could keep you trapped. Not only that, a baby trap, right? And just feeling different, feeling out of the box. You're feeling different because you're meant to do something, something very important, something that no one else can do because when you're doing it, there is no competition. There's no competition for you. There's no competition for me because we're in our own lanes and we do things differently. That's what makes us all so special. So hopefully this resonates with some of you out there. Again, I will be linking uh, the sermon by Stephen uh, Furtick. Uh, you must be important. All right, so family. Okay, so hopefully this resonates with a lot of you, uh, but if not, maybe one or two people uh, are meant to hear this the most. Continue to check your moon sign, rising Venus, Mars, Jupiter, all those things in your natal birth chart that make exactly who you are. Uh, so I've already set my uh, prayers and I've already set my intentions, Aries. Uh, I'm going to bring y'all down, sugar. Let's go ahead and get into your reading. Aries. I hope that you've had a good birthday season, Aries. No matter what's going on. No matter how you feel, the attitude of gratitude that you're waking up every day with a new start. Aries, when I split the deck, I have the magician here. You know, Aries, sometimes the magician reminds me of you, right? Fiery, uh, passionate, able to create something out of nothing, and the wheel of fortune is in the reverse. Sometimes the wheel of the fortune is in the reverse because it's about divine timing. Something that you're cooking up, something that you're manifesting is not quite ready. There is. I want to split the deck again. We have the Prince of Staves in the upright, and the Water for Will of Fortune is still in the reverse. The Prince of Stave uh, is just like the Knight of Wands, um, with the Will of Fortune being in the reverse. This means that trying to take action, but maybe just making sure that when you take action, you're ready, you're prepared, you're manifesting what you want, how you want it, exactly how you, how you described it, exactly how you called it out. Because when it comes your way, you have to be ready. All right? You have to put the work in. Don't manifest something that you're not ready to put the time and energy into. Calling in divine counterparts, coming in, calling in business opportunities when it's time to step up to the plate. Self doubting, right? Let me just split the deck. 
these cards are kind of big, so bear with me, Aries. Aries, your focus. We have the Prince of Sacred Circles, which is just like the Knight of Pentacles in the reverse. Now, depending on the other cards, this is someone who is slow and steady in the upright. In the reverse, it could mean that you're not moving or you're moving fast. But let's see what else we have. Well, we also have the Prince of Cups in the reverse. We also have the Temperance, Major Arcana in the reverse. We also have the Hermit, Major Arcana in the reverse. We also have the Nine of Swords in the reverse. We also have the Queen of Cups in the reverse. And we have the Ten of Swords in the upright. Now people say they don't read reversals, but life is not always flowers and puppies and running through fields but naked, holding hands. Life is about the truth. And life is about challenges and things that we need to overcome. Aries, your focus. The Prince of Sacred Circles, which is just like the Knight of Pentacles, but in the reverse. On the upright, this is a knight that is slow and steady. This is someone that is divinely guided. Uh, you've heard of the children's tale of uh, the hare and the rabbit, right? How slow and steady ruins the race. Making sure that everything is in divine timing, that you're ready, but in the reverse, stuck and stagnant, not making a move. I see the Ten of Swords on the board, so for some of you, there could be some type of heartache, some type of adversity. Let's keep going. You also have the Prince of Cups in the reverse. Hmm. Now on the upright, well, the Prince of Cups, this is someone who comes in with a cup of love, an invitation. And someone who comes in, well, maybe they're full of illusions. Maybe they're full of dreams. And maybe they're non-committal, right? Because it is a night. And in the reverse, it's just that. Someone who is full of illusions. Someone who gaslights and say they love you, but they really don't mean it. Their actions have proven otherwise. Someone who is over-emotional and someone who is prone to fights and outbreak of any kind of nature. And you also have temperance, major arcana in the reverse. Now in the upright, temperance is just that. It is balance. Equal give and take, equal reciprocity is being divinely guided. It is your spirit guides, your ancestor line, your angels pushing you towards something that is for your greater good and then the reverse. This is something that is out of balance. This is something that is not meant for you. This is something that you will be not be divinely guided towards. This is something that is meant to teach you a karmic lessons at times. And then you also have the hermit, major arcana, in the reverse. Hmm. Now in the upright, the hermit is being divinely guided, following that north star, taking all the life experiences that you have for this moment and finally accepting the wisdom and growing from that and building up on that, but in the reverse, This is doing the same thing over and over again. This is going back to the same relationship, the same job, the same dark places, the same addictions. This is depression. This is anxiety. This is not believing in oneself. This is not pulling yourself out of karmic cycles. And you also have the nine of swords in the reverse, which is great. Because in the upright, the nine of swords is being stuck in your head. The Nine of Swords is replaying scenes 
in what people say and fights and arguments, what you could have said, what you could have done, what they could have done, what they could have said, what you told others, the lies, the deceptions that you told, the lies, the deception, the gossip that was told about you and then the reverse. It's coming out of that. In the reverse, slowly no, no longer caring what others think. The gossip, the lies, the deception, right? And you also have the queen or king of cups because we're talking energy in the reverse. Now on the upright, the king or queen of cups, this is someone who is nurturing, loving, compassionate, and very deeply connected with their family, their household, their cup. They only give it to those who are deserving of it. And in the reverse, depending on the other cards, this is a situation where you find that you can no longer be nurturing to. This is a situation where you find that, that you can no longer offer your cup to. This is a decision or a situation where you found that all the love that you put into a situation, a person, or a thing that was empty. There was no reciprocity. And you also have the Ten of Swords. Completion. Understanding each one of these swords, who they were, the situations, the people, the places, the things, the events. And for some of you, this could be where the anxiety is. This could be where the depression is. This could be where the sorrow is. This could be where the pain is. But the thing is, this is a 10, so it's completion. Aries on the board, we have pentacles. Is this the only pentacle? Earth signs, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. We also have swords, air signs, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. We also have cups, water signs, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. We also have temperance, Sagittarius, uh, and the Hermit, uh, Virgo. And for me as a reader, this is also Aquarius. So Aries, uh, there's only one pentacle. And it's in the reverse. Now with the Knight of Pentacles, this is slow and steady. So this could be a situation where it's a job situation that you're working and you're working and there's no gain, there's no promotion, there's no bonuses, there's no accolades or even just a loss of money. And there's two cups, but they're both reverse. But the thing is, there's no wands. So whatever this is, the fire, the passion is gone. But I do have two knights on the board. Hmm. And I do have a queen or a king of cups. Now, depending on the other cups or cups depending on the other cards on the board we could say oh this is someone who doesn't know who they are this is someone who is lost but there's many situations where a king or a queen are in the reverse uh, they only become in the reverse because of the situations or the events that they allow others to put themselves in or then themselves self self-sabotage and put themselves into. But I do believe Aries, this is you, the king or the queen of cups. Someone who is usually very loving, very compassionate, very giving, giving of your time, your energy, your love, and your money. The thing is, we have a knight here. We have two knights. Uh, we have a, bear with me, you guys, these cards are pretty big. We have a knight of pentacles in the reverse. 
We have a Knight of Cups in the reverse. So what I'm seeing first, Aries, is you are putting time and energy to people who were not even on your level. The Knight of Pentacles is in the reverse. This Knight of Cups is in the reverse. It's almost like both of these people didn't feel like they were on your level. Whether it was money-wise, material-wise, or even confidence-wise. The thing is, you've allowed these people into your energy and you took the time and the uh, money, maybe resources, your love and your energy, and you put this into people who are not on your level. For some of you, you are a king or a queen and you chased People who were full of gaslighting you. People who lived in a dream state. People who painted you pictures of what life would be once they got rid of this or they did this or they made this kind of money. And being a king or a queen, you believe that. Which is why the temperance is here. Out of balance. Out of balance. One, you're a king, a queen, an emperor or empress. And this person is a prince or knight. In the reverse. Someone who gaslighted you. Someone who told you what you wanted to hear. Someone who you relied on their words. And you didn't pay attention to their actions. I forgot about this hermit. <laughs> Aries, there could be a lot of people here on this board for you that you're dealing with. For some of you, once you found out who people really were, once you found out the maybe betrayal, maybe the deception, maybe the manipulation, Thinking that who you invited into your circle, your home, your aura, your energy, you share time, your love, your money with. They really weren't real with you, right? They were just using you to manipulate you. Because they knew that you were loving, nurturing, compassionate, abundant. For some of you, this not only sent you to go within, but this sent you into a situation where you felt a little anxiety, depression. Why me? Why would someone do this to me? But understanding that it's all about self-sabotage, right? When we put ourselves in company of others who are not on our level, that means that you have to dumb yourself down. That means that you have to put yourself down. That means you have to stay in stagnant energy that is uncomfortable. And for a lot of you, I believe you realize that. For a lot of you, I believe you finally realized these people, they were never going to give you a commitment. These kind of people who don't love themselves, they will never be able to, lead, to love you, right? Or leave the situations that they're in. I almost said love, but it I almost said love, but then it came out leave, right? So for some of you, you could have been dealing with people who are already attached into relationships, partnerships, marriages. And you decided to accept 
anything as a king or a queen. And I think for a lot of you, the Ten of Swords, that's the completion of a cycle, right? That's completion of the lies, the betrayal, being backstabbed, being talked about, being gossiped about, dumbing yourself down, self-sabotaging your own self-respect, self-love, self-worth, to belong with people who are not even on your level. This is you. You're still this nurturing person. You're still this loving and kind person. You're still this compassionate person. You're still this leader, this king or this queen. Understanding that you can't give your cup to anybody. Understanding that you don't have to chase love. Understanding that you don't have to chase people. Understanding that if you have to call someone over and over, if you have to chase someone over and over, then you're dealing with little boys and you're dealing with little girls who like to play games. As a king or a queen, you don't have time for games. You have households, you have responsibilities, you have children, you have jobs, you have legacies to build. You must be important. You must be important that people will just want to come in and take from you. People will just want to destroy you. You must be important that people can see your light so bright. But if, even if they can get a little piece of you, they're willing to take that because they don't feel good about themselves. You must be important. That you have so much love to give. That you would decide on people who are not even on your level. It's time to realize who you are. It's time to take back your crown. It's time to take a seat and sit back on your throne. And when love is ready to find you, it'll find you. You won't have to chase it. You won't have to call it. You won't have to text it. It will be equal exchange, no game playing, because you're a king or a queen, and you shouldn't be bowing down to little boys or little girls. You have the elder. Move beyond your ancestral patterns, right? Raising your vibration, loving who you are. Respecting who you are, because when you love yourself, you have self-respect, self-love, self-worth. That's the vibration that's going to pull in someone who's on your level. It's almost like a kindred spirit. It will be equal give and take. There will be no lies, no deception. You won't have to meet at certain places, call at certain times. Because that person will be meant for you because you've done the work and you've healed yourself. And you also have one more. I am confident in all that I do each day. Exactly. You are confident. Even if you don't feel that way. Looking your best. Feeling good. Looking good. Even if you don't feel that way on the inside. Doing the work that you need to do, whether it's bowing down to God, getting attitude of gratitude every day, every night, getting out in nature, getting to the ocean, going hiking, biking, building your confidence up so that when people see you, they don't see the wounded warrior. When they see you, they see the king or the queen, and they know they can't step to you with any and everything. Aries, happy birthday. This is your reading. From April the 17th through April the 31st, you must be important. I'm going to put that sermon below of Stephen Furtick so that you guys can check out, check out that sermon. I'm going to put the link below. Thank you so much for tuning in to Saji Soul.
and from one soul to another soul. I love you, soul family. Have a good week.